Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The fight between Dillian White and Otto Valin on October 30 is off according to reports with White apparently sustaining a shoulder injury. So see here on screen. So we'll get to the news first and then on to a few thoughts because I think uh, the cynical among us will think, okay, well this frees him up to fight Tyson Fury. So this headline from Sunsport saying not all white, it's quite funny actually, Dillian White fight with Otto Valin off, but Tyson Fury title bout still on the cards. And then it goes on to say a shoulder injury as Sunsport understands. And further down, they understand that Alan Babich had offered to stand in and fight Otto Valin, but that was refused by the Valin camp. So, seemingly backed up by reports from Sky Sports, you have Dimitri Salita, who promotes Otto Valin, saying, it's very disappointing. If it's an injury, then he should heal, and then he should reschedule this event. That would be the fair thing to do. It would be, uh, not be fair to the sport of boxing for Dillian White to have an injury, whatever it is, and as a result of that, to be able to be mandated to fight Fury. Otto is ready to go to the UK today. He had a completed training camp and this fight guarantees a lot of attention and it was truly the right eliminator for the fight with Fury. This fight has to be rescheduled for a later date and the winner of that fight should fight Tyson Fury. Anything else would be unfair to the sport of boxing and unfair to Otto Valin. We're definitely going to petition the WBC team to make a decision. That's what should be decided. The winner of White Valin fights Tyson Fury. The WBC will pass what I feel is an important decision which should set things right. There's a little bit more, some previous quotes, etc. So we won't get to that. Nothing as yet on social media from Dillian White. See here on screen. So this is a few days ago, two weeks ago. Uh, Matchroom, nothing official from a day ago saying, I know I can knock him out. He said he's going to give me a boxing lesson and take me to school, but I didn't like school much anyway. And also uh, a graphic of uh, Valine saying Dillian White is slowing down. He's pretty basic. I feel I have all the tools to beat him. I'll give him a boxing lesson. And now seemingly that lesson will not be happening. So I guess this is a, a case where a lot of people said this was going to happen. That Dillian White would uh, not face Otto Valine after the WBC ruled that Tyson Fury had 30 days to make a fight for Undisputed with Alexander Usyk. And should he fail to do that, then he would be facing the WBC interim champion. And obviously that was contingent on Dillian White getting past Otto Valine. But if there's no Valine fight and Dillian White obviously holds the belt, continues to hold the belt, well, then the WBC at the end of that 30 days would be forced to order if White was fit to do so and take a fight with Tyson Fury, that uh, he would be the guy facing Tyson Fury next. So when that ruling from the WBC came out, there was a number of people that said, just watch, there's going to be an injury or Dillian White is going to find a way to duck Otto Valin. And I'm not saying that that's the case here, but obviously slightly suspicious just uh, 10 days out from the fight and uh, obviously this was a potential banana skin fight otto valin the bigger man southpaw tricky dillian white not necessarily used to facing that sort of opponent especially a slick southpaw so there was risk here and when this fight was announced a lot of people were saying this is a much better fight than people were expecting Dillian White would take because it said he was going to take a lower level fight for his next fight because he'd fought a certain caliber tier of opposition and he'd spoken about wanting to drop down. So this is why names like Jermaine Franklin were on the table. And Franklin had actually signed his end of the deal to face, uh, face White, but for whatever reason, Valine came into the picture and they picked Valine. And this is the thing I don't get with what people are saying that Dillian White is scared of Otto Valine. It wasn't mandated. He voluntarily chose him. But obviously with this ruling from the WBC regarding Tyson Fury, a shot at the WBC title, well, that kind of changed things to, to some degree. 
and it did seem like an unnecessary risk to some extent but still a good fight and obviously it would be a good bout of activity and Fury obviously is known to switch to Southpaw and we've seen that in different fights as well but not happening now Otto Varlin and Dillian White according to reports so nothing official from Matchroom from White himself but uh, Dimitri Salita who's part of the Varlin camp and obviously they have uh, turned down facing Alan Babich in the main event which is understandable as well because let's face it Alan Babich, um, while he does have a loyal following, has really done nothing to sort of deserve stepping up to some sort of headline event at, you know, the O2 for 20,000. So I can understand why that's not going to work out, but also what's what's in it for Otto Varlin to take that fight? But also, what does Otto Varlin getting, get out of taking that fight? Because if he fates, uh, faces him, Alan Babich, and beats him, well, people will say Babich was a hype job anyway. But uh, Johnny Fisher as well, who's, what, less than five fights on his ledger, he said, I've sold 1,300 tickets. I'll fight Otto Varlin in an eight-rounder rather than let my fans down. In Romford, we are proper. Uh, also, in another post, he has said, we want Varlene in Romford we are proper so got a graphic but clearly just a play for some attention some promotion because Otto Varlene is never going to say yes to that if he's not going to say yes to Babich he's not going to say yes to a guy who's got three or four fights on his ledger let's face it but um It'll be interesting to see what happens because I imagine with uh, the tickets that they've sold and, you know, the zone doesn't have a stacked schedule right now. They need these events because otherwise people are paying their subscription and going, well, what am I getting for this? And if Dillian White's off the card, are they going to try to bring someone in for Otto Varlin? Is he going to still use this training camp and um, headline here? There may be some guys that will offer to step in. I mean, you could imagine some guys of a certain level It'd be still be an interesting fight. You could go Carlos to come. That'd be an interesting fight. There are some guys that are, you know, always in the gym, always ready to take a call at short notice. But my sort of thinking is that they won't be able to come up with something. But what is the undercard here? Because, um, you know, apart from the Babbage fight, obviously you had Johnny Fisher facing Alvaro Torero. Uh, you had another heavyweight, Thomas Carty. There was a women's fight on there. But apart from the main event, it's a bit thin, you know, to begin with. So there's nothing really that you can kind of go as an obvious sort of fill in to, for the for the main event, make a new main event. But maybe they will be able to draft someone in at short notice. Let's face it, they had a certain amount of money for this card. They might be able to get someone at 10 days notice, maybe Carlos to come, someone of that ilk. It's at least got to be a top 30 guy there or thereabouts. But who's effectively, you know, ready, waiting and going to take the call? You would say that uh, potentially the fight, the, the card is in jeopardy, but I'm sure they'll find something to headline here. Maybe we won't be impressed, but what do you make of the situation with Dillian White? Did you expect this to happen? Did you think that White was going to pull out? There were a lot of people saying and coming to the channel saying they expected Dillian White would now be um, ducking Otto Varlin, that, that he wouldn't want it. And I've seen some people saying um, that this was some sort of eliminator. Well, not technically so. I guess you could say because the winner, or at least Dillian White, if he beat Varlin, would go on to face Tyson Fury. You could look at it in that light, but... Yeah, not good. Not good for White, not good for Vali, not good for fans, because it was a decent fight. And now we're kind of left in limbo. But Dillian White, if the uh, the opportunity presents itself, I'm sure he will go on to face Tyson Fury, and he'll no, have no qualms about that. Dimitri Salita, with his statements, kind of just shouting into the wind. I'm sure the WBC, given White has an arbitration case against them right now, is probably not going to, um, you know, fall down on the B-side Otto Varlin's favour when they make a ruling or some sort of uh, decision about whether this uh, fight should be rescheduled ultimately it probably comes down to the contract and i'm sure there's lots of outs for dillian white and matchroom what do you make of it all drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out